Last week, Hurricane Grace moved through the Central Caribbean and brought quite a bit of wind and rain to the Yucatan Peninsula, but it was never a threat to the United States. But 30 years ago, almost exactly, a storm of the same name became part of a monster, the infamous perfect storm. A look back in this week's Heather's Weather Wise. The name Grace has been used for hurricanes six different times in the Atlantic Basin. Back in its 1991 incarnation, it developed in late October, reached Category 2 strength, and moved just to the south of the island of Bermuda. Fortunately, it didn't do much harm on land. It's what happened as the storm started to weaken and turned to the north that got a little bit more interesting. As Grace was weakening on October 28th, a strong autumn cold front spawned another area of low pressure south of Nova Scotia, a nor'easter. Both the remnants of Grace and this new storm would have been relatively harmless on their own out over open water. It was an area of high pressure to the north and east that forced the two to violently collide over the next 48 hours. By November 1st, this storm was strengthening fast. Satellite images show that the storm had developed its own eye, and Air Force recon flights determined that it had indeed reached hurricane force strength. That's a remarkable feat given the high latitude that it formed at and how late it was in the season. So how did that happen? Look at the ingredients that each separate low pressure system brought to the table. Grace, as a hurricane, had lots of warm, moist air from the south. The nor'easter was backed by a lot of cold, dry air. The big temperature difference there is what got this new storm spinning like crazy. Remember, low pressure systems strengthen faster as the temperature difference around them increases. But even though the storm could technically be classified as a hurricane, it was never actually named. That's because the majority of the $200 million in damage was done by the initial nor'easter that formed off that cold front near Nova Scotia. And forecasters didn't want to confuse the public by naming something that wasn't actually going to do the damage when it was that initial storm in the first place. The intense pressure difference between the storm and the area of high pressure pushing it towards the east coast created some wicked winds and really rough surf from the Outer Banks to the Canadian Maritime. It would move inland over Nova Scotia and dissipate one day later. Looking back and considering it was 30 years ago, weather models did a pretty good job of predicting the merging of those two storms into a superstorm. What the models didn't get quite so well was just how severely the storm would impact the East Coast. Still, it was enough for the National Weather Service to issue warnings and for local agencies to start evacuations. And there's no doubt that that saved countless lives. Still, the death toll from the perfect storm stands at 13, with six of those lives coming at sea aboard the Andrea Gale. Of course, that boat is of Hollywood fame. And yes, I did go back and watch the movie after I wrote this episode. That's it for this week's Heather's Weather Wise. I'll see you next week with a new topic, but until then, remember it's good to be a geek.